Randusky, and I'm the GeForce Product Sales Manager for Gorbel. Today we're going to talk about the Soft Touch Pneumatic and Electric Control Handle line that is an accessory to the GeForce product line. And the Soft Touch handles are either an electric or a pneumatic version of one of these handles that you see on the table here. So starting out, we've got one button handles, we have two button handles, we also have three button handles that either have the offset to the right or to the left, and then we have a four button handle. And those are the four different types of control handles we have, the, four, the basic form factors. Now, getting into what these actually do and how they're built up is the next step. We want to talk about a little bit is the valve blocks and electric blocks that can make up these handles. So of the one, two, three, and four button handles, every handle is made up or consists of one of five different blocks. So the one that we have first here is what we call the, re the rear exhausting three-port valve. So the rear exhausting three-port valve is for pressurizing and depressurizing a, uh, or exhausting a uh, canister or a tank or an air balancer in the material handling industry. So the way this one works, and we're gonna demonstrate this in a second here, but the way this works is you have incoming air and one button uh, when it's depressed will send air outbound to the vessel that you're pressurizing and then when you press the other button, it will bring back and exhaust the air out of the vessel, the vessel that you're pressurizing. The second block we're gonna talk about is the uh, two button pilot block. So the, the, the double pilot block has an incoming air and then two outgoing. So with this one, you simply are piloting air, you're sending an air signal, so you bring air into here, and once you, when you press one button, it sends air out of one block, or one side of the block, and you press the other button, and it sends air from the other side of the block. And then we have a single block, a single version. And you can see this is, it looks similar to the rear exhausting three port valve, but it's thinner. But this is actually a single pilot block. So this will work the same as the double pilot block, except that it only has one button. So incoming air, when I press this button, it will uh, send air outbound. When I release it, it stops. And then on the electric side, we have either one or two button electric switches. And these, again, all these blocks are the same form factor. So you can mix and match if you need to, or you can have all electric or, or, or all air. But you have, uh, with, with switches, you either have a one button uh, switch block or a two button switch block. And we simply have actuators on the front. When you press the actuators, it will activate the switch. When you release it, it, let it, it deactivates the switch. And again, available in one and two button blocks. Okay, real quick, I wanna uh, talk about the technical specifications for the electric and the pneumatic blocks. The pneumatic blocks are rated for 19 and a half CFM at 90 PSI. So that's not gonna run a huge load. They're mainly for piloting uh, other, other devices. So you're gonna have to pilot a larger valve if you need very high flow. Uh, on the electric side, the electric switches are rated for up to 3 amps uh, at 24 volt DC or 3 amps up to 24 volt DC and 1.5 amps up to 240 volts AC. So th those are the specs on the blocks. So uh, from that point we want to get into, actually I'm going to show you how these, uh, these uh, handles behave when you actually apply air to them. So what I'll do is I'm going to start out by showing you the rear exhausting three port valve. So this switch, this, uh, this three button switch we have here is actually made up, if you were to look closely at it, you're gonna see this is an electric switch, which I, I don't have hooked up. We're just gonna talk about the air now. Uh, this is actually one of the rear exhausting three port valves here. And I've got incoming air, and I've got a balloon on the output so I can show you how this is gonna behave when we actually, when we actually uh, apply air to the valve. So what I'm gonna do is take this incoming air here, I'm gonna apply it to the valve, and I've got my pressurize and release. So when I press this button right here to pressurize, this pressure button right here to pressurize the balloon, you'll see I can I can I can meter out how much I want how fast I want that. And I can go either very fast or very slow. Now the rear exhausting three port valve will maintain pressure inside whatever you're pressurizing. It'll wait until you give it the exhaust command by pressing this lever. And at that point, it will start to exhaust. You have the same good, consistent control and flow of that of that lever right there with the exhaust function. Okay. Now the reason that is, so the reason we have good depression force, very even depression force, and 
we also have uh, that good control is because although these uh, handles might look similar to other handles you might see out in the field, uh, Gorbel designed these handles to be drop-in replacements with, an, with a significant improvement of we use a spool valve instead of the poppet valve that most competitors use. So the spool valve, in a nutshell, the spool valve uh, does not uh, increase in pressure with the increase in incoming air pressure. So in other words, a poppet valve, incoming air pressure actually helps to seat a poppet valve, which means that you have to overcome depression force. So if this was a poppet valve and I had incoming air here, if I cranked up the PSI to 100 and I tried to press this button, I'd have to overcome 100 pounds of pressure and before that poppet valve would open. Once it opened, then it would, I would have a lot of force on there and I would, want, it would naturally want to, it would want to go right down. That's why you're going to see operators in the field using a feathering technique to try to keep good control with that poppet valve. Now on the other hand, the school valve, which you just saw me use here uh, on the Gorabelle uh, handles, is a, the, the uh, incoming air comes in adjacent to the valve, so the valve is always the same. So you get a good smooth depression force regardless of incoming air control. So you're gonna be able to use that good control without any change, significant change, in the uh, startup and the movement throughout the entire stroke. Okay, so, so I just showed you the rear exhausting three port valve. Now I'm gonna show you the pallet valve. Now I'm gonna show you the two button pallet valve, and on this one I have two balloons. We're gonna, we're gonna apply air to our incoming. And I've uh, actually color coordinated the balloons here to the left. So when I press this one, that's going to behave both the single and the double. So this is a double block, which is this one right here. So this is the handle that I'm using. This is the block. And then if I were also to demonstrate this single block, they would operate the same. The only difference is there happens to be one input and one output on this one. With this one, you have two, one input and two outputs. Okay. So now same thing on this one. As I press. The, in, the incoming air is going to come in here. As I press the lever, I can have very good flow control. And you can see I can, I've got really good flow control. I can go very fast or I can go slow. Now you'll notice on this one, the big difference is whenever I let go of that red button, it's going to exhaust. Okay, these signal, these uh, double pallet valves are, are designed to send a, an air signal to another device for the most part. Um, if you need to maintain pressure for whatever reason, you will need to add a check valve in line with this, uh, with this uh, output here. Okay, so again, the rear exhausting three port we just showed will maintain pressure until it will wait for you to exhaust with the other lever. The double pallet and the single pallet both do not maintain pressure when you let the valve off. You will need a check valve for that. Okay, uh, then we'll show you the other side, same thing, green button, green balloon, press it. So we'll in, inflate, I've got good control. I can go fast or I can go slow again when I let off the lever. You'll notice it starts to deflate. But again, watch the control I have. So I've got both very fast control and very light control at the same time. And again, you can't see this, but there is very easy, consistent pressure uh, to activate these levers. All right, next I'd like to talk about the clamp collars, which is the accessory that goes along with this handle. So a clamp collar is what you see here on this one inch pipe. So this, we have actually four different sizes of the clamp collars. This is a one inch version. We have a seven eighths inch version. We have an inch and a quarter version. And we have an inch and five eighths version. And these are for different pipe sizes. And I'll show you the reason you would have this is uh, say you wanted to attach to uh, any kind of round tubing uh, one of our handles. So I've, I've giving you just our handle base here so you can get a see, you can get a feel for how what this pattern looks like. So you see there's this arced pattern on the um, on the handle itself and there's a matching bolt circle on the actual clamp collar. So what that allows you to do is attach this handle uh, to any piece of round tubing of the four sizes and then what you can do is because these these are uh, holes are uh, separated by 22 and a half degree increments you can actually shift this handle around from the, for, for comfort of the operator. So uh, what you could do for this, in this case, the reason I like these, they're really flexible. If you were just to hard mount this to something, your operator is gonna be stuck wherever you put it. If you use the clamp collar, it, it, it affords some adjustability. So you can actually put this on here, 
Uh, if the operator doesn't want to be fixed in this position, maybe they want their, their uh, hand a little bit rolled forward for comfort, and maybe they want to shift this out a little bit. If you use a clamp collar, you can actually make both of those adjustments in the field, and you're not hard, you're not hard mounted, you have, that, you have that option available. Okay, so that is the clamp collars that go along with any of the soft touch handles. Um, so as far as applications, we talked about the air, we talked about the electric. Applications, um, this is part of the G-Force product line. If you have not watched the G-Force videos yet, uh, I encourage you to go on uh, Gorbel website or the uh, Gorbel YouTube channel and watch some of the videos on G-Force product. It's a great product. But the, these uh, handles can be used in conjunction with the, the G-Force lifting device, uh, mainly for end tooling. So they can actuate functions for end defector tooling, like clamp functions that get a hold of your product, uh, vacuum on, vacuum off, clamp on, clamp off, things like that. Uh, that's a very typical use for them. Uh, the electric switches can be used with our inputs and our outputs for the G-Force product. But outside of the G-Force product line, these soft touch handles, both in the electric version and in the pneumatic version, can be used in really any application anywhere that requires pneumatic control or electric control. So the good news is, uh, these can be used in a variety of applications, uh, in the material handling industry, in the industrial control industry, or really anywhere uh, any kind of pneumatic or electric control is required. Okay, so that pretty much wraps things up. Uh, I hope this video is beneficial for you. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to call customer service at Gorbel or uh, give your local Gorbel distributor a call. Uh, once again, I'm Mark Grandusky, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.